Hey guys, so for today's video, I just wanted to show you some of the basics of Krita and give you a quick introduction to the program and some of the features that it has and just show you what I use whenever I'm making a painting. I will probably get more in depth with some of these features in future videos, but for now I think I can just give you a quick overview of the whole program. So of course the first thing that you need to do when you're making a digital painting is to open a new canvas. So you go up to file and click new and here you'll have the image size and generally I set that to inches just so I can set the size according to how many inches I want the image to be. Generally for digital paintings I want to make sure that I can print it so I will make it 8 by 10 or 5 by 7, no less than 5 by 7 because I don't really print anything smaller than that. For this I'm just going to keep it at 8 by 10 and that would be 4800 pixels by 6000 pixels. And for the resolution, I have 600 inch. Um, before I used 300, and then I would switch between 300 and 400 pixels per inch, but now I use 600 just to make sure that whenever I'm printing, the quality will be great. Also, the color model, I would just leave it at RGB unless you would like to print something, and then you can click CMYK. But if you're going to just be making a digital file and it's just going to be on the web or on your computer, just leave it at RGB. Also, the painting just comes with two layers by default. One would be the white layer that would be opaque underneath and then a transparent layer over top. So I'm just going to create this painting, this canvas I should say. As I said here we have the white layer underneath and the transparent layer over that. So here on this left side of the toolbar we have the just the little mouse tool which doesn't really do anything. We have text options. This is the brush that you use. Here's just some line tools um, and I don't ever really use these things right over here. But right over here we have the crop tool, we have the move tool, the transform tool which will let you resize and rotate your image and then here is just a measuring tool. Here's the fill tool so it's a paint bucket so you just fill the whole canvas with whatever color you would like to. This is the eyedropper and this is the gradient. So you could, it's basically like the fill tool except you have two colors that you can fill it with, you know, make a gradient obviously. Here are some measuring tools with perspective and grids and here are some selection tools. And right over here on the right side you can see you have the color picker and under that you have the layers dock and the brush presets dock. And you can also find the brushes right up here, over here. Also some layer features that you could be using would be the blending modes and just for regular painting you'd use the normal blending mode but if you would like to add some extra color to the image and overlay something you could obviously use the overlay blending mode or the hard light or soft light modes. And if you would be doing something like coloring line art, the multiply mode would be very helpful for that. Moving on to brushes, these are the basic Krita brushes that the program comes with. And you can also download brush sets or make your own. And I have two brush sets that I have actually downloaded. I have David Revoy's set, his latest one, and these are the brushes. And the other one that I have is GD Quest's brush set which is going to be all of these right over here with the pink and the blue and these are also super great um, a lot of them have the same features that the blending brushes have in paint tool Sai. also i uh, you can edit the brushes in krita so you could select um, a certain brush and go up here to the edit brush layer and if it had as you can see, this one has the pressure size selected. I could deselect that and it would just be the opacity, the pressure opacity on the brush. That's generally the only thing I ever do to brushes when I edit them is to add or remove the brush pressure size. Just because sometimes it's good for line art and so I don't like it for paint. 
And I just wanted to say that if you'd like to download either David Revoy's brushes or GD Quest's brushes, I will have them linked down in the description. So please check those out. They're really great brushes and you can support these artists if you'd like to. And if you're wondering on the brushes that I generally use, I also have a video where I talked about my most favorite brushes. And so you can click on that down in the description as well. The next feature that Krita has is obviously the color wheel, which is very great. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty basic, I guess, but you can also choose specific colors and you have the color sliders. So you can select colors in multiple ways if you'd like to. I don't really have a like, specific preference of the specific color selector or color sliders over the color wheel and I just made that super tiny. There we go. Um, I just like the color wheel because I find it very simple to use. Next, I want to talk about some of Krita's shortcuts, and these are just some of the default shortcuts. You can change them if you'd like to in the preferences, and that would be totally fine. But I just use the ones that the program comes with, and also I know that I could be doing a lot of these with my tablet or with the tablet pen, you know, the little button on it. I've been using the keyboard for my shortcuts for as long as I've been digitally painting, so I don't really mind using the keyboard. It's just what I feel comfortable with, but you could use whatever buttons you have on your tablet, or you could also use your mouse while you're painting. It can also give you some shortcuts, but I'm just going to talk about the keyboard shortcuts. And the ones that I use are Control c for undo, and the next one I use is Control for the color picker, which is probably the one I use the most. Um, the color picker is very important. And then we have the minus or the plus on the keypad for zooming in and out. And then we have the brackets for changing the brush size. So the left bracket would make it smaller and the right bracket would make it larger. The next thing I want to talk about is these transform tools right over here on this side. You could use the move, the transform, and the measure tool. I'm just going to draw a really quick little smiley face and I'm going to show you how you can transform that with the transform tools. So here with the move tool, it's pretty simple. You can just move it here with this transform tool. You can move it again. You could enlarge it and squish it down, make it bigger or smaller. Also rotate it. And this little cross right over here, this is what the axis that it's going to be spinning around. So if I put it right over here, it's going to be spinning around that one point. If I put it over on this side, it would, be, oops, it would be spinning right around that. So I just leave it in the middle generally. But yeah, that's another great way that you can edit your layers and stuff. You can also just select some of your image whenever you're painting if you like how it looks but you would like to change some of it. And you can select a part of it and then modify just that. As you can see, I'm just moving the half of it, or I could also change the size and everything. So if I wanted it to look a little bit different, you know, I can, I don't know, you can just play around with it and edit whatever you're painting. So that's also very helpful. And also for your selections, you can deselect or select all right up here. And for your image, you can mirror the whole thing, or you could just mirror a layer if you'd so choose. The last tools that I use would be the filter tools, um, usually the adjust ones and the color adjustment curves to be specific. These are the ones that I use the most and these just can change the lightness and the darkness and the hues of whatever you're painting. So I can just, you know, change the colors and all that. Um, I could also use brightness and then the HSV or HSL, which would be the hue, saturation, and lightness. These are also very cool to use whenever you're painting, just to make minor adjustments to the colors of your painting. With the filter layers, you can find them right up here, and these could apply directly to the layer you're using. And if you'd like to have the filter layers apply to your whole painting, you'd have to actually flatten the whole image and then use the filter right on top of that so it's kind of destructive to the whole file of the image and if you didn't want to do that which I wouldn't really recommend you could go down here to where you make a new layer click on this arrow and click filter layer and it will make as you can see a whole new layer just for the filter over top 
and it will apply as you can see to your whole image not just the one layer that you're the last thing I want to talk about is some resources that I could point out to you and of course I have already recommended GD Quest's brushes but I just also want to say that he has a YouTube channel which will be linked down in the description please please check that out because he has really great tutorials on Krita and he would be of super great use to you if you're starting out digital painting and using Krita and he also has some really great gaming asset tutorials where you can create your own gaming assets and they're very cute and he's got a great style and he explains the program wonderfully. If you'd also be more interested in learning how to digitally paint and see more tutorials on that, you should check out Control Paint's videos and he has a bunch of tutorials on lighting. And he also has some little workshops on his shop that you can buy if you'd like to support him, so please do. And GD Quest also has a gumroad where you can buy his tutorials and his brushes. So please check those out. They will be of immense help to you. The last thing I want to address is if Krita lags or crashes on me and how do I stop that. Yes, it does lag on me sometimes and I would like to explain why that happens and how you can minimize it. I think the most common problem would be that you have installed the wrong version of the program on your computer. So if you have a Windows computer, your computer might be of a 32-bit and you could have installed a 64-bit version of the program or vice versa. So just make sure you have the correct version of the program installed. If that doesn't work, then your computer RAM or your graphics card could be very weak and it might not be able to process large file sizes that Krita works with sometimes. That will be the case if you game a lot. If those games require greater RAM and your computer lags a lot when you're using those prog programs, yes, you probably have a smaller RAM or a slower graphics card. So it's not really Krita's fault. And the way to minimize all of this is just to make sure you have as many background programs closed as possible, don't have any web pages up, restart Krita or restart your computer, and it should work pretty well. That's what I generally do. Um, for me, it's like if I leave Krita open for a couple of days, it gets tired and I have to restart the program or restart the computer. But other than that, it works really well for me. Just try to paint a little bit slower if you can whenever you're working with large brushes over a large can. I hope this might have answered a couple of your questions about um, finding your way through Krita. I hope it was a little bit helpful and as I said before, please check out the description for all the resources I have listed down below. I think they will be of great help to you. And if you'd like to, please follow me on my social media, which is also going to be in the description, and check out my shop if you'd like to. And if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe because I put out new videos every single Sunday. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!